What's up, buddies? Welcome back to Data Driven MQB. If you haven't already, check out datadrivenmqb.com. This past weekend, we went to Virginia International Raceway and we tested the PCV system. That's what we've been doing. Uh, if you haven't already, check the last video above. You can see exactly why we we're doing this. But in a nutshell, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a data overlay with the basic retrofit Mark 8 PCV valve with the BMS turbo inlet pipe, which is causing problems on the PCV system. Then we're going to take a look at, I'll show you exactly what I found when I came back in off track after only six laps total. And then we will take a look and see what happens when you utilize the full retrofit to fix everything. And we'll talk a little bit more about it and get into some more nerdy shit at the very end. So I've got all the uh, chapters in the description and stuff so you can skip around and you know see what you want to see. Hope you like it. All right, so we're starting our lap out, leaving roller coaster and entering hog pen. This is a hard right hand corner. Lots of G forces here. Leaving, you can see the crankcase actually goes positive for quite some time on corner exit. Coming down the straight, watch the crankcase. On the shift, it actually drops because the turbo inlet pipe does not have an excess of vacuum. Under braking, the crankcase pressure actually is restored, and that's because the check valve opens up inside of the PCV. Getting back on throttle, however, depletes it instantly. And as you can see, this vicious cycle continues out of every single corner. I did not experience any smoking or knocking issues even with this non-ideal setup. I did burn through a little under half a quart of oil over the course of only six laps like this. After only six laps with the BMS turbo inlet pipe running in basic retrofit form, I was greeted with an oil cap pissing fluid down the back side of the valve cover. So that was pretty excellent and I ended up swapping back to the full retrofit right afterwards. So now we've got the full retrofit with the Venturi working, so let's take a look and see how this does. We've got a very short term dip out of hog pen on the crankcase pressure, but it recovers quickly with no problems. Certainly nowhere near positive pressure. You'll see the same thing repeat out of every corner. Minor dip, but the Venturi allows it to recover almost immediately. The only real weird situation with the Venturi is hovering around zero manifold pressure due to steady throttle input. This is because there's no boost powering the Venturi, but also no vacuum from the cylinder head port like when off throttle. When transitioning back on throttle, it again recovers near instantly. The main takeaway is that it never lets the crankcase go into positive pressure though.
the Venturi basically supplements the one big weakness with OEM style PCB valves. And while it's probably for emissions reasons, it's a huge benefit for those of us tracking and autocrossing these cars, especially if you want to change out the turbo inlet pipe. What's really neat is this next time through hog pen, you can actually tell when oil is sloshed and covering the PCV block pathway during a mid-corner 3-4 upshift. It registers as a temporary decrease in crankcase vacuum when oil seals the pathway off, but the lack of positive pressure in the bottom end, plus the PCV vacuum source keeping the diaphragm closed, means the oil is allowed to drain rather than get sucked up and consumed. The PCV valve's air oil separator can handle small amounts of oil, as long as you're not trying to run it with an inadequate vacuum supply. So we're in Mega Log Viewer, and what I have done is I was logging crankcase PSI, and I created a flag, basically. It registers as a zero or a one, a true or a false. For any time that the crankcase pressure exceeds zero PSI, you know, goes into the positive. So I actually already created that, but what this allows us to do is we can scroll out, and we can look at, these are the two sessions with the BMS turbo inlet pipe and in basic retrofit form. And we can highlight, we'll see the first four laps here. And we averaged about 5% of that crankcase being in positive for those laps. And for the other two laps I did, um, was right around 3% right there. So average of, you know, 4% roughly, yeah, 4% of the time we were had the crankcase in positive pressure, which is less than ideal. All right, so what I've done here, I have opened up all of my data logs from the full retrofit one after the other. That's what these red lines are separating. Some of these are a little bit shorter because I had some connection issues throughout the day that typically tends to happen, yeah, at least a few times. Um, but you do see that there is one instance of crankcase pressure being positive and that it accounts for about 0.02% 0 .02 of the time um, over the course of that session, you know, 0.1% of that time. So if we zoom in, we're going to take a quick look at this just to figure out why this existed. And it is the one edge case that the Venturi doesn't fix, but it does not matter for tracking purposes because it is a low stress situation. I was pulling out of pit lane and basically maintaining just enough throttle to where there was zero boost, zero manifold vacuum the entire time. You can see from here to here, our boost ranges from, you know, negative 1.3 PSI to positive 0.7 PSI. So basically, there's no vacuum sources to draw it down. And this is a weird edge case. And it just plain doesn't matter because when you're driving the balls off the car, as we saw from the video you just watched, it has no problems with keeping the crankcase vacuum under control. So hopefully seeing all of that visualized really helps you to understand what's going on in your crankcase. And you can see why I'm so gung-ho about doing the full retrofit over the basic retrofit, particularly if you want to install an aftermarket turbo inlet pipe and make a little bit more power.